Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as a facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use that Q&A feature at any point throughout our session today to type your questions to our presenters. Second, your camera and microphone are off so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of a few different sessions we're offering, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you'll have access to this recording within about a week or so. With that said, I wanna go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Juliana Young. Thank you, Jasmine. Good evening, everyone. My name is Juliana Young. I am the Assistant Director of Admission at Meridian College. Very excited you took the time this evening to speak with us. Uh, Meridian College. Our mission statement at Meridian is uh, Meridian College's liberal arts education prepares each individual for a reflective life, fulfilling careers, and transformative leadership in a world of change. Uh, Moravian College is actually transitioning into a university um, starting on July 1st, and with that is coming our new strategic plan. So really excited about the new mission statement to come. But with this mantra uh, really driving us for the past five years, um, we have certainly lived up to that, and I hope you um, get that from the rest of the presentation. Moravian College's history um, is quite a long one. We were founded in 1742 and we are the sixth oldest college in America. In 1954, Moravian College did become the first co-educational institution in the Lehigh Valley. Um, we have a partnership or a consortium with the other five institutions in the Valley. Um, so if you're ever in downtown Bethlehem, we would love to see you on our campus and the others around us. As that, um, with that being said, we are located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is on the eastern side um, of the state. We have our two campuses, our Main Street campus and the Priscilla Payne Heard campus, which sits right at the tail end of Main Street in historic Bethlehem. We're about an hour and a half to New York City and about an hour away from Philadelphia. Um, so it's a very central location if you were ever to explore internships or other opportunities in both of those cities. Um, we have a very vibrant downtown full of shops and restaurants um, and plenty of other things to do. And right across the river, we have Lehigh University. Our campus is extremely historic with our very um, deep deep roots as well as state of the art. You can see our very newest building um, sitting right here, the Sally Bridingham McShevitt Center for the Health Sciences. And that building is home to our um, nationally renowned nursing program. Our student body is comprised of all of these numbers. We have about 1900 undergraduate day students, over 55 academic majors and programs ranging from nursing and health sciences to music composition and education. Um, so we find a right fit for all of our students. Over our clubs and organizations make up our student body um, and our classes are comprised of a student to faculty ratio is 11 to one and an average class size of 17 students, but you'll certainly see that whittled down throughout your years. We have 22 varsity NCAA division three athletic sports, the newest addition being men's and women's swimming. Moravian College is an Apple Distinguished Institution. Um, what that means is every student that arrives to Moravian um, is given a MacBook Pro, an iPad, and an Apple Pencil. Our college stands by the fact that every student should start college on a level playing field, and this provides equity and access for all of our students that attend Moravian, regardless of what you can afford prior to coming to our institution. Um, it's an initiative that started quite a few years ago, and we have um, reapplied for uh, this distinguishment as we move forward. Our students gain the experience through internships, clinical experience, um, field placements, and student employment, among all of the other things that you see here. So we really encourage our students to get involved and be an active member of our community because it's what makes our student community so vibrant um, and, and really happy to be a part of. 98.35% of our students are employed or in graduate school within 10 months of graduation. Student life certainly keeps our, our uh, student life moving across campus and you can see all of the excitement here. 
And briefly, we can go over the admission process. Moravian College is a member of the Common Application as well as the Moravian College application, which you can find on our website. Our application for the upcoming academic year, fall 2022, crazy to think we're here already, does open on August 1st. Our application requirements are fairly standard, requiring a high school transcript, a letter of recommendation, test optional for all non-nursing applicants, and a personal essay or writing sample. So hopefully you're getting started on those soon. We have an early decision deadline of November 15th, and the others are going to be recommended deadlines you work with throughout the year, our regular decision um, ending on March 1st. And then financial aid, of course, is a really important piece of the whole admission process. The FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, opens on October 1st, and we encourage students to uh, supply that to us as early as they can. Moravian College invests over uh, $40 million into our Moravian College scholarships annually. receive merit scholarships up to $28,000 a year. E9 students are receiving merit scholarships. really encourage you to apply. If you have any questions, please um, send me a chat or email me. Thank you. Okay, hopefully you guys can see the presentation. Um, hi everyone, my name is Molly Corey. Um, I work at your College of Pennsylvania in the admissions office. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about YCP. Okay, see. Um, so if you are not sure where we are located, we are in the heart of South Central Pennsylvania. Uh, we kind of fall smack dab in the middle of Gettysburg and Lancaster and Harrisburg and Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so we're only about a half hour from Harrisburg. Baltimore is about 45 minutes south of us. DC and Philly are about two hours away, depending on traffic. Um, and New York City and Pittsburgh are roughly three to four hours away. Uh, we're really in a great location for cities. You know, if you just wanna go hang out with your friends and explore a new city, or if you're looking to get an internship or maybe a job in the metropolitan area. As far as our size, we are considered a medium-sized institution. We have about 4,000 full-time undergraduate students. It's a really nice size because it's big enough where you don't know every single person you walk by. We have all sorts of clubs and organizations you can join, uh, but you have the small school feel where your average class size is roughly 19 students. So it's a really nice balance of that big and small school vibe. As far as our programs, we have over 70. Um, our top five include nursing, which is our most popular and most competitive program. We have a variety of engineering programs, business, education, and criminal justice. We also offer a few, um, not random, but a variety of programs like graphic design, English, you could do pre-law, we offer sport management, or if you're not sure what you wanna do, you can always come in undeclared. We have over 180 full-time faculty. Most of them have the highest degree in their field. Um, we do not offer any classes being taught by grad students um, or proctoring classes. They are all either full-time faculty or adjunct faculty. Um, and many of those professors are actually currently working in the field, which is awesome. Okay. For our housing, we do guarantee it on campus all four years. Uh, most of our students come from the mid-Atlantic region. So Pennsylvania is very big for us, but also New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland. Um, as a freshman, you will live in a traditional residence hall, two students to a room, communal bathrooms, a meal plan. It's very, very basic. As an upperclassman, sophomore through senior year, we offer um, apartments, townhouses, suites. You could live by yourself or have three or four other roommates. Uh, many of those housing options have their own kitchens, so you do not have to buy a meal plan if you want to make your own meals. Um, or if you can't cook, you can always buy a meal plan. You are allowed to have a car starting freshman year. It is $100 every year. Um, it's about a two block walk from our main campus, which is not very far. Um, and we do have campus shuttles that run almost every day. So if it's snowing, raining, or you just are lazy and you don't want to walk all the way to your class, um, you can always pick up a campus shuttle and get dropped off um, anywhere on campus. 
If you're interested in getting involved, we have over 100 clubs and organizations. They really range from um, student leadership opportunities to just fun campus activities like open mic nights, our spring concert, going on a bus trip to New York City. Uh, we also have political and religious groups, multicultural organizations. We offer music and theater productions, um, and you do not have to be a music or theater major to be involved. We have um, intramural and club sports, and then we also offer Division Three athletics. We play in the Mid-Atlantic Conference, so we play um, a lot of schools locally around us within about an hour radius. Um, so if you're interested in playing a sport, we definitely encourage you to check it out. Go Spartans. Um, to move on towards our financial aid and how to apply, uh, what you are currently viewing is next year's tuition, room and board, the whole kit and caboodle, uh, which is about $34,000. I totally understand that's a nice price tag. You could buy a cool car with that, uh, but your college is an investment. No one can ever take away your education. Um, and we really try to help you out as much as we can to make it even more affordable. Um, so hopefully you are familiar with the FAFSA. If you are a rising senior that will be available starting October that you can complete, um, you'll wanna make sure you list all of the schools you apply to so we can receive your FAFSA and create a financial aid award letter. Um, you can get money from the federal government, Pennsylvania, and then your each institution. So as you can see, the merit-based scholarships that does have a range of, of amount. Um, that does vary if you are a commuter or if you are a resident student, but any student accepted to the college will receive a merit-based scholarship. So it does really pay uh, to do well in high school because we want to reward you when you get to college. Once it's all said and done, we are super comparable to a lot of Pennsylvania state schools like Millersville, Shippensburg, Westchester, and Bloomsburg. Finally, if any of this interests you and you'd like to check us out, if any of you are maybe just graduating, we still are accepting applications for fall 2021. If you are rising seniors, the application will be available July 1st on our website and August 1st on the Common App. Um, we are offering test optional for this upcoming year. So if you are able to take the SAT and you would like to submit scores, all we need is your application, high school transcript, and test scores. But if you would like to apply test optional, um, you can just submit your application, high school transcript, um, two letters of recommendation, one from a teacher and one from a guidance counselor, and a um, personal statement. If you have any questions after today's presentation, please feel free to reach out to me. If you would like to visit our campus, we are offering on-campus tours now. So thank you so much. Alrighty, I think I am up next. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Georgie Maverick Georges, and I am one of the admissions counselors at Springfield College. Um, Springfield College is located in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, we are about 135 years old. Um, we actually started as a YMCA school, uh, and we have some pretty close ties to the Y today. Our humanics philosophy is like our mission statement here at Springfield College. Um, it's to educate students in spirit, mind, and body for leadership and service to others. So we want our students to be as well-rounded as possible when they leave um, Springfield College so that they can see, succeed out in life. Um, we also believe that your experiences outside of the classroom are just as important as your experience that you're having within the classroom as well. So this is a little snapshot of campus. Um, a lot of our residence halls are right along Lake Massasoit right there. Um, we're one unified campus, so there's not a main road dividing all of campus. Uh, we do guarantee housing for all four years. So your senior or junior year, you won't have to fret about looking for housing. Um, it's under a 10 minute walk to all the different halls on campus. Um, so if you're like me, you like to sleep in a little bit late, um, you can definitely wake up like 20 minutes before class and make it there on time. Um, there are two different dining locations on campus. Um, one is uh, one is like a food court style and then the other is an all you can eat. Um, you swipe in and you go. Um, 
So that is a little bit about um, the Springfield College campus. Uh, we also have a brand new health science building that's supposed to be built in 2020, uh, done by 2023. Um, and we have a brand new softball field on campus that is fully adaptable. Um, so this is just a picture of one of the programs that were happening on campus and then a student playing in the quad. Um, we do have a lot of events going on on campus. Our students want to stay on campus. Um, they typically don't go home for the weekends. We're not a backpack campus. So we do have a lot of events going on on campus. Even through the pandemic, we were still doing in-person programming. Um, we were just being cognizant of, you know, following guidelines and regulations um, for the state of Massachusetts. So we have about 4,000 students at Springfield College. About 2,200 of those students are undergraduate students. Um, about 1,000 are graduate and then 1,000 are, at, are um, fully remote or at a regional campus. Um, our uh, placement rate is 98%. So within six months of graduating, our students are either enrolled in graduate school or they've gotten a full-time employment. Um, and going back to us starting as a YMCA school. So we, our students here at Springfield College really love giving back to the community. Um, it's not something we make our students do here at Springfield College. It's something that they choose to do. Um, our students do about 120,000 hours of community service a year. Um, so again, they're super involved, not just inside the classroom. Yes, we have a focus on academics, but again, outside of the classroom, in clubs and organizations, within sports, as well as within volunteering. Um, there's quite a few different offices on campus that can help you get connected with volunteer activities that have already been set up with transportation and all. We have 40 plus undergraduate majors at Springfield College. Um, we also have a few pre-professional programs. Some of our super popular programs are education programs, sports journalism, sports management, occupational therapy, athletic training, physical therapy, and then physician assistant. Um, those are pretty popular at Springfield. Our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. And you'll have about 20 students per each class um, with those class sizes getting smaller throughout. You will have the opportunity to study abroad if you'd like to. Um, and then we also have an honors program at Springfield College. Uh, we are Division Three Athletics. We have 26 varsity sports. We also offer club sports as well as intramural sports. And we're within the top 5% of Division Three Athletics. So if you are interested in Springfield College, we would love to have you come join us. Um, the application is fairly simple. You apply through the common application. Um, you will pay a $50 application fee, select one of the common app essays, um, submit your ACT and SAT scores if you'd like. Um, I know for fall of 2021, we are completely SAT and ACT optional. Um, one academic reference is needed, and then a personal interview is completely optional. Um, yes, we are a private school, but we are pretty affordable. We do provide um, students with scholarships just based off their GPA off the bat. They'll get some money from us. Um, no student is paying the full amount to come to Springfield College, and 100% of our students that fill out the FAFSA are awarded some sort of aid. So um, feel free to keep up with Springfield College. If if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Again, my name's Georgie. I'll leave my email in the chat. And then if you'd like, you can follow us on social media. Thank you so much. Um, and I look forward to talking to you all. Bye now. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen quickly. Uh, my name is Madeline, and I am an admission counselor for Kalamazoo College. Um, a little bit about Kalamazoo College. So we are a small liberal arts college. We've got about 1500 students total. So a little smaller than some of the colleges we've heard from tonight, but it's cool because it breaks down to about 400 first year students, 400 sophomores, so on and so forth. And it's actually a very diverse population of students. We've got students from all across the country, all over the world, actually several um, international students. We're about 34% domestic student of color. So trying to make sure we do represent, you know, kind of more of what our world is made up of rather than just Southwest Michigan. We've got students of all sorts of socioeconomic background, religious backgrounds, political affiliations, um, LGBTQIA plus identity identification. We really are just trying to 
um, get all sorts of different voices on campus and all sorts of different backgrounds. And um, while you're attending Kalamazoo College, it is going to be a very individualized and personalized experience. Your class size is going to have about 18 students. That does range though, depending on department level and class. I remember when I was a student there, some of my larger classes had 40 students and they would be introductory level classes. Where on the flip side, I had a couple of higher level classes that only had six students. So 18 is roughly average. They are gonna be taught by the professors themselves. We do have teaching assistants or TAs, but they're more in charge of helping with homework or assisting with you know, test prep. The professors are gonna be the ones leading the classes. Um, a little bit about Kalamazoo, because I, I know we have a little bit of a silly name. Um, so we are located in Southwest Michigan, so kind of like right at the uh, at wrist joint of the map. Um, we've got a quarter of a million people in the, ca the county area, so we're a pretty medium-sized city. As you can see down here, you've, we've got a couple of tall buildings and lots of restaurants, movie theaters, art galleries, museums, all sorts of different things. Um, the cool thing is that our downtown is a 15-minute walk from campus, so you can actually see this downtown view from your dorm. And if you are looking to have a little bit of a larger city feel, we are about halfway in between Chicago and Detroit, and you can get there through the airport that's in town or the Amtrak train. We also have public busing and transportation. So lots of things to do in the downtown. It's very accessible. Um, talking a little bit about the K plan. What is the K plan? It's essentially Kalamazoo College's guide for education. So there are four main components that we have. The first is the rigorous and flexible academics. All students at Kalamazoo College have an open curriculum, which means that you are in charge of picking which classes you'd like to take. So if you've known you wanna be a doctor since second grade, you can dive straight into your biology classes. You don't necessarily have to take history or computer science if that's not your thing. Or if you're undecided, you have that flexibility to pick and choose what works for you and what doesn't until you figure out what you want to pursue. We also have hands-on education, so getting that real-world practical experience in uh, career and professional development opportunities, so on-campus jobs, internships, all that stuff, volunteer work in the Kalamazoo area, or we have our ARCA Center for Social Justice Leadership. If you're passionate about social justice and want to gain skills um, in that area. We have the third component, international and intercultural experience, basically our study abroad programs. They are a huge part of our campus culture. We have about 70% of students doing study abroad. And you can go to one of 56 different programs, go into 29 different countries. And the cool thing is you'll spend one, two, or three terms there, which roughly equates to three, six, or nine months. So that would be like six months in Germany getting very immersed, you know, that kind of thing. The fourth component of the K plan is the independent scholarship, which is basically our senior thesis. We want our students to be able to have that research opportunity and to really develop their skill set and create a project to picking something they want to pursue as a career or something they're passionate about. And um, our students are very successful once they graduate. We've got about 92% of students who are actively seeking employment, receiving jobs after graduation within the first six months. I'm a prime example of that. I graduated in 2019 and started this job about a month after graduation. Um, we also see students going on to continue their education in medical school, law school, grad school, various types. And then we also see um, that our students really are lifelong learners. We are in the top 2% of undergraduate colleges producing PhD candidates. Um, all right, so let's say that you'd like to continue learning about Kalamazoo College, talking about, you know, what do you need for admission or talking about financial aid options, because this is a short presentation. I thought I'd tell you more about our college rather than those programs, so you can talk to me later um, through my email. My email is here on the screen, but I will also put it in the chat. We also have uh, different ways to visit campus. So we have both virtual and in-person options. So you can take a virtual tour with a student on the phone or uh, zooming with you or you can come onto campus and get a tour you will have to wear face masks but um, you know it is an option you'll be able to see buildings we also have virtual open houses and several other different more wide um, larger uh, admission programs if you're listening if you're interested in listening to student panels or parent panels all that kind of stuff 
I'd also recommend that you check out our social media. Our handle is KZU Admission, um, both for Instagram and Twitter. And then last but certainly not least, if you take a picture of this QR code, you can also sign up for more information about Kalamazoo College. But that's it. I'd love to answer your questions if you have them. And again, I'll put my email in the chat feature. Thank you. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Campbell. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission from Seton Hall University. We'll go ahead and dive right in. So Seton Hall is located in South Orange, New Jersey. We're a medium-sized Catholic university with about 6,200 undergraduate students and close to 4,000 grad students. We're split pretty evenly with 51% female students and 49% male. All 50 states as well as 70 different countries are represented within our student body and we have about a 45% diversity rate. Personal attention is really important to us here at Seton Hall. Our average class size is just around 21 students. Even for your intro classes, they're gonna remain small, around 15 students, for example, for an English class size. Our student to faculty ratio is 14 to one, and this does really allow our faculty to become great mentors for our students throughout their time at Seton Hall. We have over 90 different undergraduate programs to choose from. I've listed our colleges that we offer. So our College of Arts and Sciences is the largest that we offer. That's where all of our humanities, natural sciences and social sciences are located. We also have our School of Diplomacy and International Relations, our Stillman School of Business, our College of Nursing, College of Education and College of Communication and the Arts. We also offer a lot of great dual degree programs with some of our grad schools that we have at Seton Hall. So that's why I've listed our Seton Hall Law School. We offer three plus three programs with them. So accelerated program if you're looking to earn your JD. We also have our School of Health of Medical Sciences um, for any students interested in physician assistant, physical therapy, occupational therapy, or athletic training. We pride ourselves on hands-on learning. So whether that's doing research with faculty and presenting that research, um, at national conferences, we also have study abroad opportunities and students can even spend a semester in Washington, DC. There's tons of opportunities for community service and you'll be asked to complete 10 hours of community service during your freshman year. We also have WSOU, our college radio station, the Setonian, our college newspaper, and tons of theater productions that students can get involved in throughout the year as well. We have a great market research center and mock trading room and sports polling center within our business school specifically. So students are getting that experience before they even touch an internship. We also have tons of learning labs, both on our main campus in South Orange, as well as at our health science campus in Nutley, New Jersey, which is about a 10 minute drive from our main campus in South Orange. We're also only about 14 miles from New York City. There's a train station right in downtown South Orange that'll get you right into Manhattan in 35 minutes. When it comes to internships and career services that we offer at Seton Hall, there's definitely a lot to take advantage of. Currently in our database, there's over 17,000 internship opportunities for students to apply for. We have a great career center with 12 different career advisors that'll start working with you as early as your freshman year. Over 80% of our students have at least one internship before they graduate. Many will have more than one. And I think it's why we have such a high employment rate of 93% six months after graduation. Tons of employers do come and recruit directly from our Seton Hall graduates. You can see some of the top employers listed here on this slide. Certainly a lot within finance, media, healthcare, um, a lot to take advantage of. When it comes to campus life, we have over 150 different student clubs and organizations to get involved in. This includes multicultural clubs, political groups, um, religious groups on campus. We also have 26 Greek organizations that range from social group life to service-based. So definitely a lot to get um, involved with. And there's tons of events happening during the week and on the weekends as well. When it comes to athletics, we are a D1 school, part of the Big East Conference with 14 Division I teams to take advantage of. We also offer 25 club and intramural sports for students who wanna stay active but don't want the D1 commitment. In terms of housing on campus, there are six residence halls as well as two apartment buildings for students to live in. About 80% of our freshmen will live on campus and then overall about 50% of our undergraduates will live in university housing. When it comes to scholarships, Seton Hall gives over $100 million in grants and scholarships every year. 90% of our students are receiving some form of aid, whether that's state aid, federal aid, or aid directly from Seton Hall. If you're admitted to Seton Hall, you're automatically considered for a merit scholarship. On top of that, we do offer what we call special scholarships, which do require an additional application. The deadline every year is January 15th, and you can apply right on our website. 
When it comes to the application process, there are some deadlines to keep in mind. We have two early action deadlines of November 15th and December 15th. Early action is great because it's not binding, but it's certainly a great way to show your interest in Seton Hall. And then we also have two regular decision deadlines of February 1st and March 1st, if you need a little bit more time to work on your application. We are on the Common App, and then we also have our own Seton Hall application that you can find on our website. There is an application fee, but I'm happy to provide that fee waiver code for you guys, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll also need your personal essay, your high school transcripts and council reports, one teacher letter of recommendation, and then we are gonna be test optional for fall 2022. The only exception to our test optional policy is our joint MD program for any students interested in med school. And then when we are reviewing applications, we're using a holistic review process. So we're taking into account all the different pieces of your application that you've submitted to us, but just some averages to keep in mind, our students typically have an average GPA of a 3.6 unweighted, an average SAT of a 1235 or an average ACT of a 27. And with that, I'll go ahead and pass it off to the next presenter and I'll include my contact information in the chat if you guys have any additional questions. All right, hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Patrick Renee and I'll talk a little bit about Villanova University tonight. Uh, it's presenting now. So Villanova are like one of our claims to fame is that we are the nation's one and only Catholic and Augustinian institution. So the values of the Augustine order are very similar to many of the values and missions we've heard espoused tonight. But in our case, they're particular to those three Latin terms, which are translated to truth, eternity, and love. Um, just like the other schools tonight, we're medium sized and because of that, a really strong community that takes place on campus. And so I, I joke that if you were to talk to an alum or a current student, you'd, um, you'd hear the term community thrown out multiple times in like the first minute and talking about Villanova. And in the aspects of the truth, of course, relating to the academic um, talents and skills we want to equip our students with, and then the uh, love or care aspect relating to that philanthropic ideal or that, that concept of the common good and, and social justice idealism we want our students to be imbued with or, or further deepen during their time at Villanova. And so I uh, like the other schools talk about what our campus is like. I mentioned us being medium in size. Our undergraduate student body is about 6,700 students. So, and like a lot of other schools uh, in that range, it's a place where you're gonna, you know, even after being on campus a month, you're gonna see faces you recognize, but during your four years, there's still a lot of new stimuli and interactions to be had with other students as well as faculty and staff. We're fortunate that our students are coming from a lot of different places. Pennsylvania is of course, uh, one of our most represented states on campus, but uh, otherwise we do have nearly the whole country represented as well as internationally. And so it's great uh, getting to have students coming from a lot of different backgrounds, be that education-wise, family-wise, geographically, uh, religiously, et cetera, and bring that all to campus and forming that, that social fabric that we have. Another great feature for us, as this photo indicates, is our location being in the suburbs of Philadelphia. So if you look there on the horizon line, you can see the uh, skyline of downtown or what they call Center City. And so from campus, there's actually three different train stops you can take to access the city and the rest of the transit network. Um, of course, being there in the mid-Atlantic seaboard gives you easy access to a lot of different areas we've covered today uh, from you know, central Pennsylvania to eastern Pennsylvania, New York, Washington, DC, and north south there on the seaboard. And with the school, again, our size, we are comprised of four different colleges. So as noted here, we have arts and sciences, business, engineering, and nursing. You as a student would be applying distinctly to one of these four colleges when the time comes to apply. In some cases, you would apply distinctly to a particular major or program, that being the case when it comes to nursing, as well as engineering. And then for our science programs, you can elect to a specific department or you can apply undeclared broadly to the sciences. Otherwise, for our School of Business, as well as the rest of the majors in arts and sciences, everyone comes in undeclared there. Some little special pieces about the application process. If you are considering nursing, like this goes for a lot of other schools, but we just encourage you to take biology and chemistry during your high school years. If you're looking at engineering, we encourage you to take, uh, excuse me, encourage you to take calculus, um, and then also require that you take physics during your four years of high school. And then the case of our school of business, uh, something not as common is that we highly, highly stress that students take calculus in high school there as well. That's just kind of something that they're looking for in that application and admission process. Of course, a lot of these programs are gonna allow you, uh, with our average class as a Villanova being 23 students, 
that personal attention and uh, relationship that you can establish with your professors, just like the other schools have noted tonight, and also having that complemented by different research on or off campus, participation in internships in Philadelphia or beyond, as well as a wide range of study abroad opportunities that most students take advantage of in their sophomore or junior year. Uh, we are fortunate to have study abroad programs that do facilitate every major at Villanova. Then as part of that community aspect, uh, I say the main threads or the primary threads of the social fabric at the school relate to athletics as well as community service. Uh, we like Seton Holler and the Big East Conference for our Division I athletics. So there's a lot of support for that on campus as most of those teams do play on campus and it's free for students to attend, not to mention then the club sports and intramurals as well. And then the other part along with athletics that it really all students take part in during their years is that community service that taking place with different huge projects like our, uh, we run the largest student run Special Olympics event in the world. We do a day of service in September every year in uh, Metro Philadelphia, along with a lot of other smaller projects. So those happening very locally, as well as regionally and beyond. And then uh, this slide just shows some brief outcomes as it relates to the student body at Villanova, both during their years and after. So our retention rate, uh, I think being a great and signifier of the quality students were able to gather and attract just like yourselves. Uh, most students, you know, coming from, again, these variety of backgrounds to Villanova and, and making it their new home in those first couple months, that first year on campus and, and staying around. Then uh, most students completing internships as well as research, those both being very prominent. And then that placement rate for us as well, like the other schools is very high, showing the, the success and again, skills and talents we're equipping our students with. For our application process, we do utilize the common application exclusively. In our case, there's these different, different deadlines noted here. We, like others that presented tonight, will be test optional for the coming admission year. You know, the majority of our students do receive financial aid to attend Villanova, and that being distributed and awarded through the FAFSA form, as well as the CSS profile. Uh, that said, I know I'm running low on time. And so if you do have any other questions, uh, please don't hesitate to attend any other visits or presentations that our office will be conducting this summer, and we are welcoming tours on campus. Thank you. All right, so that concludes the presentation portion of our session today, but we're now gonna transition to the Q&A portion. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in that Q&A section. With that said, I wanna encourage all of our presenters to return Feel free to turn on your cameras and I'll pose the question to the entire group. Our first question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll start with the first presenter. So feel free to respond in the order in which you present. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, at Meridian College, we have a tradition called Heritage Day. Um, Heritage Day started on our 275th anniversary as an institution, um, and it is a day dedicated to service. So if anyone has a familiarity with the Moravian Church at all, it is a very service and community oriented um, church, and we have dedicated our day um, to pay homage to that. So everyone from the whole community, ranging from President Grigsby down to our first year students gather, um, and we get a random service assignment, and we go out into the community and do service for the full day, and come back and share what that meant to us on a personal level, on an institutional level, and for the greater community. Um, and we share what is a love feast. So Moravian sugar cake is a very yummy dessert. Um, and we share that and we um, spend time with one another and really reflect on, on that day together. So classes are canceled, campus is shut down, and that is how we spend that day. And it's one of my favorite traditions I experienced as a student and throughout my time at Moravian. Um, at York College of Pennsylvania, um, we have a tradition called Old Spart, and it's a big green rock um, on campus, and it gets painted right before graduation in the fall and the spring. Um, and right after graduation, all of the graduates can come down and get, it used to be like buckets of white paint. They've gotten smarter, and now we just use paint pens, and you can write your name, and you leave your mark on campus, which is really fun. Um, so my name is written on that rock under many, many slabs of paint. So it's a fun tradition. 
Alrighty, at Springfield College, um, we're actually the birthplace of basketball. So one of our favorite traditions is something called hoop ball. Um, so it's a big basketball tournament um, that happens at Springfield College um, and high schools from all over uh, the United States come and play on um, the best basketball teams. And we actually had um, LeBron James come a few years back. Um, so we do have some big name NBA players come and our sports um, management students uh, primarily run the show. So it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm hoping this year we'll be able to move forward with that uh, tradition. Thanks. Um, here at Kalamazoo College, we have this thing called Day of Gracious Living. And it sounds kind of similar to what Juliana was saying, where it's similar concept. Days are, you know, rant. So, wow, my brain just shut off. I apologize. Um, day of Gracious Living. We call it Doggle. And essentially, during our spring term, a day gets randomly picked that no matter if you have exams, class, presentations, no matter what, everything gets canceled. And it's just a day to go and enjoy the warm weather because in Michigan, you know, spring is very, very warm. It's currently 90 degrees and very humid outside right now. Um, and so students get to go and just go to the beach. You know, we've got all this waterfront. It's only about 45 minutes away. So uh, the school will bus students out to the beach. Otherwise students can go to the downtown and really just have a day to enjoy the weather to enjoy your friends and to acknowledge that summer is almost here and we've got a lot to look forward to so yeah day of gracious living doggle that's probably my favorite thing so at seton hall every year um, we like to go all out for christmas so we do a huge tree lighting ceremony on our campus um, we have a huge tree almost as big as the rockefeller center tree in new york city um, all of our acapella groups come and sing during the tree lighting Everyone's in blue Santa hats, which is really fun. There's a toy drive, hot chocolate. So it's just a really good time before finals of your fall semester. One at Villanova I addressed briefly, it's called Fall Festival. And so it is this uh, large special mix event that Villanova hosts on an annual basis that brings over a thousand athletes from the tri-state area onto campus and just a weekend long extravaganza. And it's neat to see all the students pitch in, you know, cheer, support these athletes. And uh, frankly, kind of just when I consider the university to be its best self. Nice, thank you all for sharing. So that concludes our virtual college fair for today. But I do have a few closing announcements. As you exit from this session, a Zoom survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. I also want to remind you to sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And finally, you'll have access to this recording within about a week or so. I want to thank all of our presenters for joining us, but also thank you to our attendees for taking time out of your busy day. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you again.